So from today, we'll start alkylating agents. Uh, now, in order to um, in order to control cancer, okay, in order to treat cancer or control cancer, we use different classes of drugs, right? So today, our focus will be on alkylating agents. Now, if you see in the backdrop, I have inserted an image of DNA, right? Now, why exactly I have used DNA? Because alkylating agents are the ones, uh, it's the class of drug in which DNA is targeted, okay? All right. So what happens is, you see, this is the structure of DNA. As you all know, it's a double helical structure, right? And you see here, the here we have the uh, bonds, right? Hydrogen bonds are here, right? And then phosphate backbone is here. So the alkylating agents are going to target the DNA and it will stop it uh, to do protein synthesis, okay, um, or to multiply, right? So because of which, when the cycle of the cell division will not be completed, right? So at this moment, DNA will be uh, checked again, okay? It will be reviewed again if it is correct or not. And it by doing this, it will help us to uh, treat the disease, right? Okay, so the general characteristics are clinically useful alkylating agents have electrophilic center and becomes covalently linked to neutrophilic centers of target molecules on the DNA molecule. Okay, so what happens is that alkylating agents have a electrophilic center. Okay, and then on the on the DNA strand, okay, they hit on the nucleophilic centers and then they bind to it, right, covalently, so that they would do their mechanism, right? Okay, so alkylating agents target the nitrogens and oxygens of purine and pyrimidine in DNA. Uh, this may lead to abnormal DNA strand crosslinks. These agents also target other, uh, bi uh, other biological moieties, including carboxyl, imidazole, amino, sulfhydryl, and phosphate groups, which become alkylated. These agents can act at all stages of the cell cycle, but the cells are more susceptible to alkylation in late G1 to S phase. Now here, I have mentioned, uh, as I'm sure you all know at this stage, that uh, before mitosis, right, the cell has to go through several stages, right? So the thing is, first of all, comes up the G0 stage, which is the resting stage. Then it goes to G1, that is pre-synthesis stage. Then is S, uh, which is DNA synthesis stage. And then is G2, which is pre-mitotic stage, right? So this is the interface. So, uh, and then mitosis happens, right? And here I have mentioned the drugs, which would be, uh, you know, working on these particular levels, okay? All right. So again, uh, when I will upload the video, you can always pause the video and then note this um, entire table because this entire table is the summary of everything which I'm going to talk about right now, okay? All right. So acquired resistance can involve an increase in DNA repair processes, reduction in cellular permeability to the drug, increased metabolism and production of glutathione, which neutralizes alkylating agent by conjugation reaction that is enzymatically catalyzed by glutathione as transferase, right? So with the exception of cyclophosphamide, uh, parenterally administered alkylating agents are direct vesicants, okay? So when we I say direct vesicants, it means that these are the agents which will cause blisters, okay? So, and it can also damage tissues at the injection site. So some degree of leukopenia occurs at adequate therapeutic doses with other alkylating agents. The dose limiting toxicity is bone marrow suppression, 
Alkylating agents are also highly toxic to dividing mucosal cells, causing oral and gastrointestinal ulcers. So most of these agents also cause nausea and vomiting, which can be minimized by pre-treatment with 5-HT3 antagonists. And guys, let me tell you, this is very much important that you know this specific thing that uh, 5-HT3 antagonists will uh, uh, can uh, can suppress nausea and vomiting. Okay. Also, most of these alkylating agents can cause uh, sterility and alopecia, which is common. Patients with uh, zero derma pigmentosum are hypersensitive to alkylating agents. So I tell you what, zero derma hyper, uh, this pigmentosum is actually a condition in which it's a genetic condition, okay? It's a genetic disorder. So, uh, you know, what happens is uh, that let's say if, if somebody has this condition, okay, and they are exposed to the sunlight, so even skin pigmentation can be changed, okay? and um, uh, freckles can be there okay so uh, this is a condition in which can contradicate right okay so alkylating agents are mutagenic uh, when i say mutagenic it means it can cause mutation and can cause secondary cancer for example leukemia and sterility later in life then we have cyclophosphamide and if phosphamide, which are nitrogen mustard. Guys, let me tell you, when we'll talk about alkylating agents, you will hear about nitrogen mustard. They are very much important, okay? Now, how do they act? they act? Let's talk about it, right? So, when we talk about their mechanism of action, so cyclophosphamide is metabol uh, metabol metabolically activated to 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide, which in turn is non enzymatically cleaved to aldophosphamide. So you see, this is being changed to this, and then this is being changed to this, right? And then when we have our final, uh, uh, what, what do you say? The final thing, right? So you have. Um, this molecule which is by the name of aldophosphamide right so in tumor cells this molecule is cleaved to phosphamide mustard which is toxic to tumor cells so this means that we are taking this medicine just to get this particular phosphamide mustard which will kill the tumor cells okay and acrolein the agent suspected to cause sterile uh, hemorrhagic, uh, hemorrhagic cystesis. So uh, this is actually inflammation of bladder, okay? So when we talk about uh, pharmacological properties, so cyclophosphamide can be administered orally, uh, intravenously, or intramuscularly. So therapeutic uses are, it is used to treat non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemia, uh, mycosis, fungioides. Uh, now, if, if you would look at this particular terminology, I'm sure since in the last lecture, we discussed that whenever a fungal infection is caused, so we call it mycosis, right? So uh, this thing, uh, my, mycosis fungicide is actually, uh, wait a minute. Is, is this condition, okay, in which, wait a minute, okay, this is the condition, right, so this is a condition, um, all right, we also talked about the non-Hodgkin lymphoma, okay, so the non-Hodgkin lymphoma is actually a cancer which is, uh, which is basically its production site, or you can say its causative site is uh, lymphocyte okay so there are lymphocytes in your uh, blood okay so they are they 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 basically cause this 
specific kind of cancer okay all right moving on multiple myeloma retinoblastoma uh, breast and ovarian carcinoma and small cell lung cancer it is a component of many combination treatments for a variety of cancers it is also used in some autoimmune conditions such as lupus uh, nephritis and arthritis then talking about the adverse effects so cyclophosphamide has less incidence of thrombocytopenia then um mec uh, miclor uh, miclor it's okay but immunosuppression is still the most important toxic effect so uh, acrolein induced hemorrhagic cystis can be prevented by co-administration of the sulfahydryl compounds uh, that is to mercapto ethyl sulfate sulfonate which neutralizes ac uh, acrolein at acidic ph in the urine or acetyl cysteine or ample hydration so reversible alopecia also uh, often occurs then we have a four uh, a phosphamide it's a cyclophosphamide analog with less potential to cause hemorrhagic cystis. Uh, CNS and urinary tract toxicity limit is used to special application. Again, I inserted this slide and I would expect you to pause the video here and then learn from this slide. Okay. All right. Then we have this condition that is uh, 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 the drug that we are going to discuss is uh, mechlorethamine okay that is uh, the nitrogen mustard so its pharmacological properties include it it is administered iv it causes local reactions therapeutic uses include um, this agent is used primarily in the MOPP regimen. If you go here, you will find out what is MOPP. Okay, you will find out what multiple drugs are used. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, as a second line therapy to treat Hodgkin lymphoma. Now, you guys see in the previous slides, we talked about non Hodgkin lymphoma, right? And in this slide, it's mentioned Hodgkin lymphoma. So, the difference is that non-Hodgkin lymphoma may arise in lymph nodes anywhere in the body, okay? Whereas Hodgkin lymphoma typically begins in the upper body, okay? Such as neck, chest, or armpit, all right? Okay, so adverse effect of this particular drug is leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, are dose limiting toxicities, repeated course of treatment are given only after bone marrow function has recovered it uh, its use may reveal latent viral infection such as herpes zoster and uh, i have inserted the image of the condition here all right then we have melphalan and uh, chlorambucil which are again nitrogen mustard so the pharmacology of these is similar to mechlorethamine these agents are administered orally it is often used to treat multiple myeloma and carcinoma of the ovary and breast it is the agent of choice for chronic lymphatic uh, lymphocytic um, leukemia its toxicity is related mostly to myelosuppression so myelosuppression is actually a condition in which bone marrow activities decrease okay and because of which RBC, WBC, and platelet numbers fall. Right, everybody? So, uh, you know already, right? I'm sure in physio physiology, you all have studied that um, the myeloid cells are being produced, okay? And then the myeloid cells differentiate to uh, produce uh, different blood cells such as RBC, WBC, and platelets. So, myelosuppression means that this myeloid cell will not differentiate right so this this is called myelosuppression 
So nausea and vomiting are infrequent. There is no alopecia with this medicine. Uh, chlorine bacil is used to treat chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia, some lymphomas, and Hodgkin disease. It produces less severe bone marrow suppression than other nitrogen mustard. Then we have busulfan, thiotipa, and then thylenamine. So busulfan is administered orally to treat chronic uh, myelogenous leukemia and other myeloproliferative uh, disorders. It produces adverse effects related to myelosuppression. It only occasionally produces nausea and vomiting. In high doses, it produces a rare but sometimes fatal pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, so this is called, the, the specific name is given when you take the medicine and if lung, on the lung uh, fibrosis develops, so this is called uh, busulfan lung, okay? So its use is associated with adrenal insufficiency and skin pigmentation. Then we have uh, thioptipa is a ethyl anemone that is converted rapidly by liver mixed function oxidases to its active metabolite triethylene phosphoramide. It is used in high dose chemotherapy regimens. It is active in oral cancer Myelosuppression is a major toxicity. All right. Then we have carmistin, lumistin, which are nitros, uh, uh, nitrosoureas. So its mechanism of action is they're highly lipophilic. They cross the blood-brain barrier. These can alkylate DNA and can carbamylate intracellular proteins. So pharmacological properties are these agents are given orally except carmistine, which is administered IV. Therapeutic uses are that they are useful in treatment of Hodgkin disease and other lymphoma as well as tumors of the brain. Adverse effects include um, myelosuppression, okay, uh, but with delayed effects, possibility up to six weeks, then the use of these agents may also result in renal failure. Then we have the carbapazine, and then we have triazine. So mechanism of action is um, dark carbazine is activated in the liver to a metabolite that on decomposition produces alkylating cytotoxic carbonium ions. So pharmacological properties include at, uh, that it is administered IV and it is a component of a bvd regimen you can go back to that slide and also it's mentioned here but you can go back to the slide and learn that okay then we have uh, therapeutic uses the uh, the carb uh, the carbazine is used to treat um hodgkin's lymphoma disease malignant uh, melanoma and soft tissue carcinoma sorry sarcomas sarcomas related to um, uh, the tubules, right? Okay, so adverse effects are, uh, it is moderately myelosuppressive, nausea and vomiting occur in 90% of the patients. Flu-like symptoms also occur. Then we have procarb uh, procarbazine, which is triazine. So its mechanism of action is, it is a substituted hydrazine that needs to be activated metabolically. It produces chromosomal breaks and inhibits DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. So uh, pharmacologically, it is, uh, it is administered orally. It is lipophilic and enters most cells by diffusion. It is found in the CSF, and it has no cross resistance with any other anti-cancer drugs. So therapeutic uses include that it is particularly useful in the treatment of Hodgkin disease as part of MOPP regimen, and it is also active against non-Hodgkin lymphoma and brain tumors. 
So adverse effects include it, it, it most commonly causes leukopenia and thrombocytopenia along with other GI disturbances. Myelosuppression is dose dependent. This agent has a 10% risk, risk of causing acute leukemia. Uh, Procarbazine augments the effects of sedatives. It also causes infertility. It is a weak monoamine oxidase inhibitor that may cause hypertension, particularly in the presence of sympathomimetic agents and food with high tyramine content. Then we have mitomycin. So its mechanism of action is that it's a natural antibiotic that is activated intracellularly by an alkylating agent that causes single strand breaks by free radical mechanism. So, uh, okay. I, I, I'm sure in chemistry you have studied about the free radical mechanism, right? Okay. Uh, then pharmacological properties, uh, it is administered IV, extra visation may cause local injury. Then therapeutic uses include, it is used for the palliative treatment of gastric carcinoma. So palliative treatment are actually those treatments in which you don't cure specific disease. You address the entire person, okay? You don't only treat one disease, but you have um, a full coverage, okay? That how exactly the patient is uh, suffering as a whole and everything, okay? All right. So adverse effect, it's uh, dose limiting toxicities, myelosuppression. Then we have cisplatin carboplatin, and um, oxaliplatin, uh, okay? So mechanism of action is that cisplatin is a platinum compound, platinum compound, that enters cells by diffusion and active transport. After intracellular replacement of its chloride atom by water, it acts by complexing with DNA to form crosslinks. So adjacent guanines are the most frequently cross-linked, which leads to the inhibition of DNA reapplication and transcription. The effect of cisplatin is most prominent during the S phase of the cell cycle. So pharmacological properties are that it is administered IV and therapeutic uses are it is used to treat testicular tumors with uh, bleomycin and when blastin, the PVP regimen or etopside, uh, ovarian carcinomas and bladder carcinomas, okay? So it is also used for several other carcinomas. Okay, then adverse effects are, the dose limiting toxicity of cisplatin is cumulative damage to the renal tubules that may be irreversible following high or repeated doses, but which is routinely prevented by hydration and diuresis of the patient. So this agent all, almost always produces nausea and vomiting. It is autotoxic with tinnitus and hearing loss. Hearing loss. And it also produces peripheral neuropathy. So cisplatin is only moderately myelosuppressive. And I tell you, this is the most used drug. Okay, all right. Then we have carboplatin is a platinum compound administered IV for patients with ovarian cancers as well as non-Hodgkin lymphoma, non-small cell lung cancer, testicular cancer, and translational cancer of the urinary tract. So this agent has similar but less severe toxicities than cisplatin, hence it is uh, it has replaced cisplatin in some chemotherapy combinations. The dose limiting toxicity of carboplatin is myelosuppression. Then we have oxaliplatin, uh, another platinum compound, is used for the treatment of metastatic colon cancer in conjunction with uh, 5-FU and glucovorin. This agent 
causes myelosuppression and peripheral neuropathy. Thank you, everybody.